Welcome to the second part of the Air School Symposium. My name is Lucia Tantardini and I am a research fellow in history of art here at Leopold. Before I introduce the next round of speakers, please allow me to thank very much Professor Alan Shaw for your generosity and Professor Antonello Amici for sharing with me uh, all his expertise, as well as Catherine Wise for her assistance and patience. It is for me a pleasure and an honor to welcome the next four speakers of today, starting from Dr. Gabriel Kim. Gabriel is a research fellow at Liverpool and director of studies in history of art at Clare College. His research concerns patterns of power and authority in local society in late medieval and early modern England. Gabriel completed his PhD here in Cambridge in 2014 and won scholarship from the Lightfoot, Ellen MacArthur, and Ops Trusts. He studied for his master's degree at the Cultural Institute in London, where his dissertation won the Director's Prize. And he was an undergraduate here in Cambridge at Gombey and King's College. Gabriel won the Reginald Taylor and Lord Fletcher Prize in 2013. Gabriel is also a trustee of the Mangolea and Monument Trusts and King's House, and has worked as a consultant for several architects' practices and for the National Trust. As mentioned earlier on by the President, Dr. Bink worked extensively on the Erskine project, with, with particular focus on the Clairvaux archive and its holdings documenting the genesis of the college. Today, he's going to share with us some of the most interesting and curious findings of his research. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's a uh, part of the preparation phase, which I spent a little time to plan what I'll kind of and Alan asked me to say uh, some words about uh, some of the things there. And uh, I'm aware that uh, other people in the group have done this, and they will know that there's a, a fascinating uh, tranche of documents about not only the generation of uh, the design of Clare Hall, but also the whole idea of the Cambridge College and its future as it was being articulated in the early uh, 1960s. And it's quite tempting to talk further about these ideas, which still seem very pressing and even urgent today, but I wait, I'll, I'll try to stick around to the architecture. And in particular, uh, the relationship between uh, College and Clare Hall and <coughs> And the first thing you notice as you begin reading through uh, the documents around the founding of Clare Hall, and particularly the governing body minutes through the course of 1963, which is the year when the intellectual foundations of Clare Hall were really being laid, is the buildings are at the centre of the discussion. And actually, they're often leading the discussion. And what you find is that the, the tenor of the conversation is often, uh, we have space, we have resources, we must expand but what kind of a thing is it we're going to build? And over the course of 1963, the answer to that question becomes more and more ambitious and also uh, ends eventually in Clare Hall. And uh, some of the fellows' ideas that were expressed in that year would become essential to the design of the college. And in particular, the idea of keeping the Cambridge College as something that's relevant in a modern, uh, international, and competitive market for research and for teaching. And in particular, they anticipated a huge growth in the number of uh, fellows and of research students, uh, both male and female, particularly with families, and the need to uh, equip colleges to accommodate families so they could still participate in the life of the college, as long as they were kept separate from um, fellows and their, and their studies. And Erskine refers to these two sides, the two kind of purposes of the college, as being the sacred and the profane. <laughs> <laughs> and he needs to keep them separate. So the whole design is here you know, on this axis with the sacred, where we are as a profane over, where I live over there. And um, uh, interestingly, there are other emphases that, that are there in the early 60s and seem sort of newly relevant today, but were kind of lost in the theme period. And particularly this idea of group work. Academics would work collaboratively, and you need flexible spaces for them to do so, which is very uh, feels like a very modern and contemporary idea. Um, but was certainly something that fellows at college worried about in the early 60s. But the other thing um, 
that you, sorry, I just skipped a slide. Um, uh, the other thing um, that you notice as you uh, read through the document is that it's very difficult to get a feel for the kind of college that the fellows were imagining in terms of its aesthetic or the sort of ethos they wanted it to, um, to express, to represent. Um, but there are a few interesting clues that come up. I'm just going to talk about three of them very quickly. Um, but the first of these uh, clues is in the memoirs of Richard Eagle, who was speaking on the TV earlier. And uh, this is a, a hostility to unpainted concrete. And he gives this as being the reason why the other four candidates on this uh, mysterious shortlist, and it's not in the archive, I don't know if they are, <laughs> but the other reason they were rejected the other candidates is because they all wanted to use unpainted concrete. The first thing was the only one did. The second clue, which is definitely related to the first clue, and which appears on a number of documents, is that um, the fact is also very important, as, as did Erskine, that the buildings would uh, harmonise with the suburban setting of West Cambridge and Newnham. <coughs> and the third uh, clue is a sentence um, which I think is drafted by Don Hollister in the architect group. <coughs> And it's a rather beautiful sentence that the college buildings should be gracious, serene, efficient, and economic, uh, which seems to me quite an, an elegant way of describing Erskine's approach to architecture. And that quote uh, that we, we heard this morning, that uh, architecture is the art of that which is useful, seems to be very consistent with what the fellows were looking for. So the, the uh, conditions of the college's design are obviously very well known, and they are remarkable. I'm sure it's the only college to be designed on a boat in Sweden. Um, but Erskine also spent long periods of time with the fellows at Clare College, and he didn't visit very often. Um, but when he did visit, he would stay for quite long periods. Um, and this is um, uh, a misstated, but I think it's one of the earliest uh, visits to Clare. And this is the schedule. If you can't read it, it's quite charming to sort of write a copy and stuff. Um, worked in there. But he would stay, he would stay for many days, and he would stay at the Master's Lodge. At Clare College, and they would stay up late into the night uh, discussing the new building and the new architecture, uh, which you don't get from this, but this is from uh, Richard Eagle's uh, memoirs at the time. Uh, and the fellows were obviously very uh, instantaneously taken with Erskine. They liked him immediately and were totally persuaded by him. Um, and he obviously knew how to impress a room full of Cambridge dogs, just like he knew how to impress a room full of residents for housing estate in Newcastle. And there's a little uh, clue, I think, in Eden's memoir about why that is, and he says, Erskine was very good at listening. Mm. And I think that's something that appeals to Cambridge academics. Uh, <laughs> so I suspect that was the reason. Um, so I think this, uh, this kind of threatens to all sound rather um, kind of apolitical, or even given the rejection of concrete, almost slightly conservative. Uh, but when Erskine came to write about that or at the end of the project, uh, he sounds very remarkably um, anti-establishment. And uh, he wrote, uh, I'll just quote here, We wish to achieve an open-ended and attractive environment which is free from memories of medieval and Renaissance monumentality or opulence. And uh, also, uh, to ally ourselves with new society builders rather than establishment. And this is in Cambridge University. And uh, he would even describe a tradition as being a threat to the, um, well, to the free movement around the college in the way that he intended it. And I think context is important here. This was written for an audience of architects and peers and not for his clients. Um, and also, uh, at the time of being written, over the course of 69, relations with Clare Hall were extremely tense. I think you probably felt less uh, burdened to, uh, where you felt more uh, liberated to write about the commission as you wished to. But it still seems to me that this, um, this combination of the, uh, the progressive and the humane in a very practical, uh, open-minded, unpretentious fashion is distinctive both of the Clare Hall College as built but also of those very early ideas that the fellows of Clare College had for their new foundation. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Eckhart Salji.
or Sandy, or Sandy, is Professor of Mineralogy and Petrology and former head of the Department of Earth Sciences at Cambridge University. His extensive and impressive work in the field of mineral physics was rewarded in 1996 with his election as a Fellow of the Royal Society. In 2004, he was elected Chevalier de l'Ordre de Palme Academy and was awarded the Cross of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany in 2007. He is Fellow of the Leopoldina, the National Academy of Germany, and the Royal Society of the Arts and Sciences of Barcelona. He was Chairman of the Steering Committee of the National Institute for Environmental E-Sciences, he was Chairman of the Cambridge E-Science Centre, and Chairman of, the steering, um, Chairman of the Steering Committee for the Cambridge Environmental Initiative, which advises us on environmental research in Cambridge. He was also Chairman of the Cambridge European Trust. In October 2009, Professor Sanji became President of the Hall, a post that he held until 2008, when he was succeeded by Sir Martin Harris. A confidant of Ralph Kirsten, Professor Sanji will share with us his reflections on the event. Oh, thank you very much. Well, if you want to see me really, I'm, I'm hanging there, I'm the guy on the right. So, uh, <laughs> the college staff thinks I look better than that. <laughs> so, yeah, I can say a few uh, words about the person of Erskine. I'm not an architect. I was not in competition with him. And so, he was probably much more relaxed when we talked on the uh, four eyes and uh, meeting each other in, in Stockholm. In fact, I, I was in Stockholm for collaboration uh, relatively often before, and so I knew some of his uh, Swedish buildings, but I have not seen Clare Hall at that point. So uh, only when I became president here, I saw the building, I liked it very much. And when it came to changing the entrance, which was extremely drafty,